Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Ticket. In today's video, I am going to be sharing the first 10 things to do on your Pixel 8 Pro. This is a fantastic device. I want to make sure I maximize your ownership by tweaking some really important settings right away. So let's dive in and get started. The very first thing that you want to do is you want to go to your settings, okay? Go to your settings, go all the way down, tap on About Phone. Once you tap on About Phone, tap on Device Name. And this is where you give your phone a unique name. So right now it says Pixel 8 Pro. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to change the Saki 8 Pro. Okay. So what happens is when I connect this phone to other devices or when I search for this phone on other devices, it is going to show me this name. And also it just makes your phone yours. So that's number one. Number two is going to have to do with battery. Okay, so again, in the settings, I want you guys to go to the battery. Tap on it and go into adaptive charging. Click on it and make sure it is enabled. This is going to be very important for people that want to keep this phone for a long time. So if you're somebody that gets a new phone every year, this might not be that important. But if you're going to keep this for a while, enable adaptive charging. And it tells you right here, this is going to help extend the battery's lifespan, which is very important because if you don't have a battery, your phone is worthless. So that's number two. And also I want to show you guys, you can also enable or disable that battery percentage number on the top. As you can see, if you like it cleaner, take it off, enable to activate. And then you can also go over here to battery diagnostics and you can run a bunch of tests on your battery. And of course, if you're having any one of these issues showing up right here with a brand new phone, you probably want to return and replace that phone. But in the future, if you have any battery issues, you can run the diagnostics right from here. For example, if the battery was draining too quickly, you tap on this one, it's going to allow you to troubleshoot it. Okay. And it's going to give you a bunch of suggestions on what to do to fix that particular problem. So that's that. Now, the next thing I want to talk about has to do with wallpapers. It's an amazing feature. So press and hold on the screen and go into wallpapers. And of course, I know you're going to customize your phone. So here we have a brand new feature. When you tap on more wallpapers, you can see that we have something known as AI wallpaper. You tap on this guy and you have all these preset themes that are further customizable with AI. So for example, look, I have all these options. I got X-ray, night, bloom, whatever. If I were to go to any one of these guys, let's just go to imaginary. Look at this. We have a bunch of text at the bottom. You can tap on inspire me to get a randomized AI generated wallpaper. Or what you can do is once it's done, you're going to see what's possible. Look at this. This is beautiful wallpaper. Or you can tap on these words that have underlined. So tap on lamp and change it to something else, UFO, okay? And then tap on burlap and change that to linen, all right? I don't know what's going to happen here. Tap on the colors and say cream and orange, and then you tap on create wallpaper. And what that is going to do is it's going to create a unique wallpaper that you've never seen before. Look at that. A surreal UFO made of linen in shades of cream and orange. And that's what you get, which is pretty accurate to what I described, but it's completely randomized. And while you're in the screen, you can tap this button to go between various other options like the x-ray option. So again, I can do inspire me. Let's see what it's going to uh, generate for me. It says x-ray snapdragon in vibrant colors. Look at that. Okay. But I can tap on the underline and I can choose uh, separate different parameters based on my needs. Uh, I can also swipe over to see a bunch of different options it made for me. For, for this text alone, this phrase, I have three different options as you can see. So that's fantastic. Let me just exit this real quick. Okay. By the way, again, if I go back in there, just be aware that you do have so many options to go through. Okay. Once you create a wallpaper and save it, it shows up at the bottom here for future reference. 
So fantastic, let's move on. Next thing you wanna configure is you wanna to go to your settings, all right, and then you wanna go into your display, and then you wanna scroll down and pick a navigation mode. So we have gesture navigation, which is this. I go up like this, I bring up multitasking right like this, recent apps, go inside, I go back like this, okay? Or you can just go to the good old button. So tap, and you have three button navigation, now that's home, that's recents, and that's back, okay? So some people, as far as I know, still prefer the button navigation. And with each navigation option, you can go into the settings and further customize those options. So if I enable this, now I can press and hold to access my Google Assistant. And if I were to go to this, and if I tap on settings, I have all these options, as you can see. Swipe to invoke Assistant, sensitivity for back, and all that good stuff, all right? So you can customize this based on your needs, no problem. And one more thing that's very cool is when you go to your settings, okay, when you go down to system, there's a menu here that's very important. It's known as the gestures. So when you tap this guy, you are able to enable or disable all these various gestures for your phone, including things like the one-handed mode. So if I were to enable this, Look what I can do. I can pull this down, and that allows me to access the whole phone with one finger if I have to. And then I can tap here to go back. So gestures are here. Lift to check the phone. Tap to check the phone. This is already on, so that is this guy right here. So tap to check the phone, okay? And then when I go back, I can disable this if I don't need it. Flip camera for selfie. This is my favorite, though. Flip to shh. So basically, if somebody calls you, if an alarm goes off, and if this is enabled, you just flip your phone like this, and it mutes the phone or kills the alarm or any notification that's played. So that's great. All right, let's talk about the camera. So I'm gonna launch the camera real quick, okay? I'm gonna show you a couple of things that are important here. Let me just move this slightly. So first and foremost, when you launch the camera at the bottom, you can switch between photo and video. Now, when you switch between them, at the bottom, there's two different settings. This one here gives you full manual controls on photography parameters like the ISO, shutter speed, focus, white balance, shadows, and all that stuff. You can swipe it down. So this is the pro camera controls. As an example, I can tap on ISO and I can manually change the ISO based on what I need. Now, if you're just an average consumer, you're not going to know what these are. Not a big deal, okay? The big deal for you is going to be this thing here. So you go to the settings. The first thing I want you guys to do is tap on more settings and enable the grid. By default, it is off. You want to do three by three. Once you do that, you are going to have this grid, as you can see, and that is going to allow you to better align your photos when you are taking everyday shots. On top of that, as an average consumer, when you tap on the settings, you are able to go to the pro mode here and you can switch between 12 or 50 megapixel resolution for the main camera. The 12 megapixel resolution is great for just everyday quick shots. If you want highly detailed photographs, maybe you want to print them and put them in a little frame, you can do a 50 megapixel shot for a higher resolution, more detailed photo, okay? So that is changed from Pro. Now, if you are familiar with raw photos, you can switch between JPEG, which is what most people use, this is the default settings, to JPEG plus RAW, so you can take those RAW images in your computer later or even on your phone and edit them with greater detail. So those two options are here. Remember, your camera, the main camera on a Pixel is up to 50 megapixels. It is going to be up to you to use it as needed. Now, everything else here is great. You can look at the timer. You can have a 3-second timer or a 10-second timer. And basically, if I take a photo... It counts down to three before it takes a photo, okay? So all those settings are going to be right here, and you can tap on more settings to access additional settings. As you can see, you can turn off the camera sounds 
So when you take a photo uh, of something and you tap the shutter button, it doesn't make a noise. You can silently take photos if that's what you want. And if you want to record video, you tap on this button. Just go to uh, video. Again, tap on settings to access video settings. And I'm sure you guys know 1080p versus 4K. You can switch right here between full high definition, which is 1080p, to 4K ultra high resolution, which reflects on the top here, okay? And you can change the frames per second. By default, I recommend full high definition at 60 for great smooth looking videos. If you want more detail, you go to 4K and get additional settings. And there's so many more settings right here if you need them. Again, even when you're in video, you can tap on more settings and access additional settings, okay? So just a couple things you wanna know about the camera. Let's go back to photo and exit. Now, one more thing I'm gonna have you guys notice is this thing on the top right here that just comes enabled by default. You can swipe back and forth, okay? This is at a glance option. If you press and hold and go into home settings, it's this thing right here at a glance. This can be turned off or customized. So now, you can see it is just turned into a date. That's it. Now, if I press and hold, go inside here, home settings, tap on it and turn it on. I can also tap on settings and I can customize at a glance information to get all these options right here based on which apps you actually use. This works on the home screen and the lock screen can be enabled and customized or disabled based on your needs. So that's fantastic. Now, one more thing with customization, when you go inside here and when you tap on wallpaper and style, you have this option known as themed icons. So basically whatever wallpaper you have, you can pick these different theme colors, as you can see for that particular wallpaper, okay? You can even go in here and get even more options as you can see, other colors. It's all gonna be up to you. So let's pick this one. You can see the theme has changed. But what you can do is you can also enable themed icons. So those icons are going to also get the same color scheme that you pick from this screen right here. So now when I go outside, you can see we have a uniform look, not in here, but on the outside, we have a uniform look on all these app icons. Okay, so wallpaper and style, that's themed icons. They get based on the color you pick from here. You get wallpaper colors and you have other colors you can pick on demand. Fantastic. All right, next thing we want to talk about is the lock screen. So if you turn off the phone and double tap, it's going to wake up. You can press and hold on the lock screen. You get this option at the bottom, click on it. It's going to ask you to unlock it. So unlock with fingerprint or face or pin number and you get the lock screen customization. And look at this. I can switch between these various clock styles, as you can see, which is fantastic. I like this one. But the biggest thing is at the bottom here, you can choose the shortcuts. That's the left and the right shortcut. If I tap on it, the left shortcut could be a flashlight, camera, whatever, for quick access. The right shortcut in this case is do not disturb, or you can have any one of these options, as you can see. So make sure you set those properly for easy, quick access. And also when you tap on more lock screen options, you can go inside here. And one of the things that I like, which you can enable is this one, uh, always on screen. So enable this. Now when you turn off the phone, you're gonna have this always on display. You can see it's very light, but it's right here with uh, some critical information. As you can see, always double tap and you can wake it up then you can go right inside. So that's great, and that's right over here, but it does increase your battery use. If you do not need it, don't enable it. Next up, on the top, add text on lock screen. Tap on this guy. Let's just add some text. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Saki tech, oops, right here. You can have anything up here, okay? You can have your name number. In case your phone gets lost, somebody can call that number. Uh, because it is going to be on the lock screen. I like to put a signature or a quote. So tap on this one and look at this. Double tap to wake it up. It's going to show up at the bottom. It says Saki Tech. All right. Again, you can have anything you want here. Some people like to add a quote, your favorite quote from a book or a movie, whatever. 
All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys learned some amazing things. Any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know for now. Have a fantastic day.